just go down all the way. It's hard in a hot, hot middle of a hot summer, isn't it? <laughs> Beck's Practical Farm Research is here to help you turn your products and practices into profit. You've got questions, we've got answers. This is Ask PFR. Hey, welcome everybody to this edition of Ask PFR. Today we're in El Paso, Illinois at our facility here. Today with me, Travis Burnett, PFR agronomist from Indiana. We shipped him out here with us. And Chad Kaler, local agronomist here. Chad lives in Bloomington, Illinois, right? All right, just about 20, 30 minutes away, Jim. Perfect. One of the questions we got recently after Bex released our new seed treatment, Escalate powered by Nemesect, we got a question about nematodes. The question was really, how do I sample in corn and soybeans? When do I sample? What are the methods? What do I do with the samples? So Chad, got two different crops. So Escalate powered by Nemesect is something we can use on corn and soybeans. How does somebody go about sampling for nematodes in corn? Um, you know, in a, in a cornfield, if we suspect nematode damage like what's behind us, we would normally see visual symptoms out there. And we may start to rule out things that would possibly give us some of the symptomology we might be thinking about with potential nematodes in corn. But usually we're going to see stunted areas. Juveniles of those nematodes are going to be very actively feeding on the outside of the roots or in the roots of the corn plants. In the in the stunted or marginal areas. Right, right in the margin of the area. Not in the worst part of the center of the area that's affected visually, but and also not in the outside of that area where it's good corn like what's behind us. But if we see symptomology, it's normally kind of a circle or a regular shaped pattern in the field that we'd go to kind of on the on the margins of it. So so, so this time of year, can we actually sample for corn nematodes like in corn this height here right actually this is a really good time if you're seeing uh, symptomology in plants like this that are stunted and you suspect nematode damage this would be a fine time to go ahead and do that sampling and now if we see some symptomology take soil samples and then uh, submit those to a lab and get the results back so we got a corn crop here i don't know the leaf stage here seven eight somewhere in there what do I physically do? I see you got some things yeah. here. Tell me what we need to do, Chad. So here's some of the tools necessary if you're going to be out uh, sampling for nematodes at this stage of corn. Uh, obviously you need a good soil probe and this okay. is what I call a clamshell type probe. This is one that actually can take um, about a 10 inch soil profile and when you're sampling for corn nematodes you want to be able to get a sample that's about 8 to 12 inches deep. Okay. And so this one gives us about 10 inch so that's a pretty good uh, depth and obviously that clamshell type we can open it up make sure we get a good soil profile and usually we only want per sample we want about uh, no more than 10 acres represented okay. so within that 10 acres we want to collect about 20 samples maybe th up to 30 samples for every 10 acres you know we've got some typical soil sample type bags or plant tissue so this would be examples of what we would not want to use Jim oh, okay. okay so these are paper uh, and they would tend to heat up pretty quick okay. and we would lose moisture from the sample okay so we would really want to use these quart baggies really uh, mix it up get it ground up pretty good and basically just fill that quart baggie up okay and then after that it's very important that we keep those samples pretty cool we don't want to put them in a box or back in this bucket put them in the back of the truck get over 100 degrees it's going to really destroy the activity of the nematodes that are there you know if you think about the root system on the corn plant uh you know it, it goes out at about a 30 degree angle from from the base of the root system here but usually when i'm taking a sample i'm going to probe about you know roughly four inches away from the base okay. and go down as far as you can and there i'm at the stop which is about 10 inches yep you just slowly pull that probe up and again that clam still We'll be able to open that up and inspect that uh, soil sample. All right, great information. Let's do this and let's go over to our soybean field. Let's talk a little bit about sampling for soybean cyst nematodes and get some more information from that. So let's go that way. So Chad, same field. Now we're in soybeans, I assume they're R1-ish, yep, R1. So is this the right time to take a soybean cyst nematode sample? 
Right, soybean cyst nematode, they can reproduce with many different cycles throughout the growing season. So if we have a susceptible variety where we've got reproduction going on in the soil, uh, we basically want to sample more towards the end of the year, or I should say after harvest, okay. post-harvest, we should really time that sampling because that will give us a much better idea on what the population of soybean cyst nematodes is out there uh, in preparation for management techniques for next year. So as it relates to soybeans then, I know in corn we talk about sampling over the root system do we need to worry about that or is it pretty much yeah. irrelevant so not as important in beans to stay on the row but in 30 inches personally what i do is i try to stay pretty close to the row if we're in 30 inch or 15 inch beans after harvest time very good travis guys are saying okay you and pfr have recommended alevo do i need to use Escalate powered by Nemosect and Olivo at the same time. What, what's our data talked about? What's our data shown us as it relates to Olivo? And then what's your opinion about using that? Escalate SDS, which is our Escalate seed treatment with the full rate of Olivo, uh, we've seen on average a 2.1 bushel advantage uh, over a four year period when testing that through our PFR system. Was, that, was there SDS present? Or? So that's, that's a good question. It really, it's an important piece to, I guess what we're talking about today is, you know, really we, when we started testing that, it was for the sudden death syndrome control that we can get from that. Um, but that, the, the results that I just spoke of there, that 2.1 bushel, that was in the absence of SDS pressure, at least visual symptomology of the SDS pressure. So uh, what we're finding out is that Olivo piece is actually doing more than just controlling sudden death syndrome. And that the soybean cyst nematode uh, suppression or control is, is part of what we think is uh, adding to that, that yield advantage, that 2.1 bushel. So yes or no, do I need a Levo and Escalate powered so by Nemosect? They're doing two different things. So okay. the, the SDS piece is a fungicide, okay? And, and the, the nematicide with the Nemosect, um, in high instances of soybean cyst nematode, the combination of the two is really a good one-two punch uh, where we have had issues in the past. So, so, so yes, I would recommend both both products. So four years PFR proven, right? Uh, right. The Olivo. Chad, if you farmed here in central Illinois, uh, would you use Olivo and Escalate powered by Nemosec together or what would you recommend? You know, as we push planting dates earlier and earlier every year, yep. uh, you know, there's more importance on Olivo for the SDS protection. Uh, as far as the amount of nematodes that are in the soil, that's more of an unknown. There's not a lot of soils that are sampled on farms that we know exactly what that cyst nematode population is, whether it be the cyst or the eggs. So uh, in my opinion, I'd be using both because it gives us extra insurance there. So it makes sense. That well, was really good information, appreciate it. So here we are with Chad Kaler, Travis Burnett, I'm Jim Schwartz. Appreciate you joining us today for our 11th episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe or comment below using the hashtag AskPFR. Thanks everybody, have a great day.